Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be reviewing cultural patterns. Every place you visit is made up of both human and physical characteristics. When thinking of human characteristics, think of birth rates, age distributions, languages, religions, and other demographic data. And when thinking of physical characteristics, think of rivers, mountains, vegetation, the climate, or man-made structure. Geographers will often analyze both the physical and human characteristics of a place to gain insight into the distinct cultural patterns that exist in an area. By analyzing a place and looking at the cultural landscape, geographers will be able to better understand what languages are spoken in a place, how the different sexes are treated, what the dominant religions are, what the ethnic breakdown is of an area, what types of architecture are most commonly used, what products are being bought and sold, how the political and economic systems work, and how all of these elements come together to help create a unique sense of place for an area. Remember us sense of place is a strong feeling or perception people have of a place. For example, if you go to New York City, you will immediately be able to feel the busy, fast-paced lifestyle. Or if you return home from a long vacation or from being in college for a semester. Think of that feeling you get when entering your hometown or city. Oftentimes we can see a stronger sense of place when a community comes together to use public spaces for activities or community events. The process of a community coming together and transforming a public space for different activities or events is called placemaking. The project for public spaces looked at what creates a unique sense of place and strong community and identified four main categories. Sociability, uses and activities, access and linkages, and comfort and image. All these different components help create a unique sense of place and create unique cultural patterns across an area. Now when looking at different places, we can see the impact of different centripetal and centrifugal forces. Oftentimes these forces are influenced by different linguistic, ethnic, and religious factors factors of a place. Centripetal forces are forces that unite people and bring them together. Examples of centripetal forces would include having a common language, a strong sense of identity, nationalism, or a homogenous united community. On the other hand, centrifugal forces are forces that divide a group of people and push them apart. For example, if a place is geographically large and as people spread out over large distances, it may make it harder to communicate or keep one cohesive identity. Other examples of centrifugal forces could be discrimination in an area. Having political or economic inequalities present in society, not having a unified culture or set identity, or having too many barriers between people, which would make it harder for people to communicate with each other. For example, having a large variety of languages spoken without one common language. Now, just because a place has multiple religions, ethnic groups, or languages spoken does not mean that the society will have more centrifugal forces. Having a culturally diverse society often leads to a stronger sense of place, an increase in the economy, and a stronger community. Centrifugal forces occur when there is tension and division between citizens due to a lack of communication, having inequalities in society, or can occur due to negative stereotypes, prejudice, xenophobia, or racism. Societies that have more centripetal forces will often see a united society with a strong identity, while societies with more centrifugal forces will see a divided society. All right, now comes the time to practice. Remember, if you found value in this video, can consider subscribing and checking out my ultimate review packet for more help with your AP Human Geography class. As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and I will see you next time online.